results. So I just received my house results. Not too bad, right? But I've come a long way. So let me bring you back to my uni days. I've flown to CET4 many times. CET4 is the entrance level English exam in Chinese universities. Feeling that it's pretty much the equivalent of、uh, scoring a solid five in IELTS. There was one time I didn't even have the courage to take the test, so I acted cool, took a nap instead. So when people asked me, "How come I haven't passed the exam yet?" I could say. Oh, my alarm didn't go off. I missed the exam so bad. Next time, I'll definitely nail it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so that's how low my confidence was when it comes to English. Coming from that rock bottom to scoring a seven in IELTS, that was a long, long journey. Just that when I started to think things will probably become a little bit easier. Little did I know, from seven to seven point five, seven point five to eight, eight to eight point five, each point five improvement was even a longer journey on their own. So here is a short version of my long story of how I go from failing CET four to scoring an eight point five in IELTS. So I've taken out many times for different reasons. Initially, it was to study abroad, then visa application, now to apply for Australian residency. But those are just the external drives. Internally, I want to prove myself that I can do it. I want to become better. I no longer want to be this helpless, incapable learner who only knows to cram, to follow those ridiculous test-taking techniques online, studying all the time, but didn't really know how to study smart. I want real improvements in my English ability and have that reflected on the score report, not just passing the exam because of luck and then continue to suck at English. I want to be seen as equal in conversations. Not just nodding, pretending that I understand what they were talking about. So deep down, I just want to be better. And English and IELTS happen to be the path that I take to become a better learner and a better person in general. The problem is the score that I need seems to be ever increasing and unattainable at the same time. And it is true that most of the time I wasn't able to get what I wanted. There were just so many challenges and difficulties I wasn't ready for. For example, starting off, I was so overwhelmed. I didn't know where to start with the numerous prepared materials, cramming, doing test papers all the time, but only to see that the number of the hours that locked in increasing, but nothing ever changed in my English ability. And people told me that. Oh, you need to memorize those answers for speaking. So I did that for months, only to be stunned. My speaking dropped from seven to six point five. Taking the test over and over, but I had no idea what my problems and weaknesses were. The score reports only gave me a number, but didn't really say anything about where I needed to be focusing on and working on to do better the next time. I was so confused, and all that. Led to anxiety, which piled up and severely affected my sleeping quality, and my life was gradually taken over by IELTS. I led a life with no friends, no social, no sports, no entertainment, just me and my BFF IELTS. And even temporarily passing the exam with a relatively high score didn't really help at all. The first day I arrived in Australia, I did not understand. What the taxi driver mean by "have a good one"? I had to ask him to repeat several times, which still did not help at all. Just when I was about to get more confident about English, thought I was actually getting better at it, I was destroyed. Life never stopped to surprise me in a bad way. The stake of failing now is failing at getting better at English. It's needless to say, pretty high. It means delaying or even losing the opportunity to study abroad. How do I even explain to my friends? I'm just staying at home, doing nothing, getting ready for this IELTS exam that I couldn't pass, no matter how hard I try. While all of them are being a real adult, handling life tasks like、uh, they know what they are doing, and here's me. And it means. Being incapable of handling academic and life tasks while living overseas, which is pretty much why I came here. 
He also means being unable to apply for residency. Then, what's the point of living so far away from my family? So many precious years out of the window, huh? More important than anything, it means being unable to accept myself, to be reminded that I'm not good enough. I suck at English every day, every second. To live with this self that I'm not satisfied with makes my life pretty tough. And there is this voice inside of me screaming so hard. I wanna be better. Luckily, I've managed to solve the majority of those problems I mentioned. So I'm going to make a series of videos on IELTS to document and reflect upon my journey of going from failing CET4 to scoring an 8.5, maybe a 9. I mean, who knows, right? But mind you, not that I have everything figured out. I'm still working on some problems. For example, how to study even smarter to make every single effort count to get the best result with the least amount of time. How do you combat procrastination to be more productive? And also, I do need an aid on writing. Currently, 8.5 short, so job's not done yet. I also make sure I'll document this part. How do I go from 5.5 to an 8 on IELTS writing? I have a pretty good idea what my issues are and what I need to do in order to fix the problems. So hopefully this will happen in no time. So I'm inviting you guys to join me on this journey. Each week there will be one video focusing on one specific IELTS problem. I'm hoping that those videos will give you some new perspectives, practical solutions, maybe motivate, inspire you a little bit. Remember, I failed to see for many times and many of you didn't right you passed so if i can do it you definitely can do it as well consider subscribing join me on this journey that's sure the right my name's kevin i'll see you guys in the next one bye